We are back now with our exclusive interview with local TV personality and longtime traffic anchor Tammy Dombeck. Last year, she settled an age discrimination suit against CBS, which runs the local CBS affiliate KTVT in Dallas, Fort Worth. The EEOC backed Dombeck. The LA Times reported allegations of discrimination, harassment, and sexist and homophobic remarks by two CBS executives who were also involved in Tammy's case. Among the evidence, email communications around the decision not to hire her full time. Here is part two of my interview with Tammy. I remember when we were trying to come to the decision, my husband and I, and he said, you know, I, I don't, I just don't think you're going to, you should let them get away with this. But this is cultural. This is part of our social mm -hmm. culture, mm -hmm. is it not? Oh, yes, absolutely. And yes. you can slap someone on the hand and you can find them and mm -hmm. you can give them procedures and practices and they can be more careful mm -hmm. and how they post an ad for a job opening that doesn't change people from the inside out right. or institutional discrimination. Right, absolutely. The way they're, what you, the way they, some of the executives that you could see in some of these emails and the way they spoke about some of these girls and, and myself and other reporters is there's, there's a lack of respect and that, you know, the journal, like I said, the kind of the journalistic integrity that is, that is failing. And, and as, I'm not sure about other stations, but definitely what I saw throughout the emails and the different depositions in, in, within CBS at the top, mm -hmm. um, specifically. As the search was underway to fill the traffic position at CBS 11, the news director sent an email to senior vice president of the CBS television station group, David Friend. The subject line read, is this what you wanted me to find? In that email, the news director wrote the candidate had five years of experience as an NFL cheerleader. Friend's response? sign her. She met none of the other qualifications posted in the company's ad. And in pre-trial depositions, president of CBS television stations Peter Dunn was questioned about why Dombeck wasn't hired. He said only we were looking for somebody else. This just occurs to me. Do you think what's happened with you has in some way offered a new set of protections for people who work there who might have met the same fate? Absolutely. Absolutely. There were specific on-air talent, seasoned professionals that had been there a long time that were in my depositions that there were ageist remarks specifically about that came out in my depositions. And I feel that, that they will be protected. Someone looked tired right. and worn out. Outdated. Outdated. Yes. Yes. And those are code for? And those are synonyms for old. And that came up in my depositions. So what would you Very. say to other women? So there are so many other women out there who are not in high profile positions. Right. There are people who are going to be tuning into this because they know you, mm -hmm. they like you, they want to hear what you went through. There are so many other women out there who don't have that platform. And they're dissuaded by the cost potentially of suing an employer. Absolutely. Or this notion that they will be blacklisted and, and not work in their respective industry again. What would you say to them? Absolutely. I'd say stay strong stay very strong and I do want to speak to that as far as the cost of things so that you can you can do two different things um, you can hire a private attorney and they will normally take you know 40 percent I mm -hmm. never hired a private attorney or sued in private court in civil court mm -hmm. I went straight to the EOC to go by the age to say I was I was discriminated against because of the age discrimination act so when the EOC the Equal Opportunity Employment Commission takes on your case all of their lawyers, because our taxes pay for them, are free to you. I didn't pay one dime to my lawyers, not one dime. So if you feel that you've been discriminated against and it has gone against a federal law and you go to the EEOC, they are really there to be your champion. They are not there to make money. They are salaried. They are there to be your champion and to, to deal with your case and and just to help you. Mm -hmm. So I really did want to speak to that because I know a lot of people did reach out to me when my case came about and they said, I just can't afford a lawyer. And I said, well, if you feel like you've been discriminated against in any way, the EEOC is there for you free. So much so, Ron, that I love, love my senior trial attorney, Joel Clark. And after everything was done, I said, I, we want to send you something. You know, we want to send you something. And he, I, I can't remember the cost, but he said, I'm not allowed to take any gifts. No gifts. So we sent him a very lovely letter, <laughs> but he's not allowed to accept any money. Or Call any him every morning there. with a free traffic right, report. We love it, right. 
It's smooth exactly. sailing on your way to work. Exactly. A lot of people, so. though, can't afford not to work again either. Absolutely. And so even Absolutely. if right. legal counsel is free, they're dissuaded by this rhetoric right. that we've all been faced with, and that is you'll be seen as a troublemaker. You'll be seen right. as litigious. You'll never work again. No right. one will want to hire you. Do you think that's true? Oh, I think that's absolutely the, the scary thing. It's an, it's very scary to think to think that, and, and it, that's absolutely gone through my mind. And so, you know, I was I'm blessed that I have my my husband could support us. But you know, there were I, well, during the lawsuit there were other things that I could do. You know, I created a production company and then got my real estate license. So I was still able to work. Mm -hmm. But to but you're right to be back in this market, market five, where I've grown up where it's the fifth largest market in the nation, where my family is, and to think I may never work in this market again is, yeah, very scary. Still heartbreaking? Oh, very heartbreaking, yes, mm -hmm. very heartbreaking. And yet when all is said and done, no regrets in pursuing it? No regrets. I feel like with, with my faith in, in if the faith in that if it wasn't meant to be this way, then it would be, then it would be, it would have had a different outcome or a different turnout or, or they wouldn't have taken my case. But I, I can, I can say from sitting here now, seven years later, I am proud that we took a stand. We reached out multiple times to CBS Corporate and to local affiliate KTVT for comment, but received no reply. And you heard Tammy say there, she has no regrets. She hopes her story will inform other women in the workplace, but she says that financial settlement, just over $200,000, while some consolation does not make up for a career she loved. 